Welcome back, guys. We are on day two of our linear functions unit. And today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to graph lines without a table. And sometimes you'll hear me call these um, quick graphs, but the actual name is we're going to graph these lines using the slope intercept method. So the first thing I want to talk about is how do the lines that we graph today compare to the lines that we talked about earlier in the year? So earlier in the year, we looked at graphs that were proportional, and we would have equations that are in the form of y equals kx. And you re might remember that k stood for our constant of proportionality. So if I gave you a graph, you guys would find a point on that graph, and you would divide the y-coordinate by the x-coordinate, or if you were given a table, you would divide the y-values by the x-values, or if you were given an equation, you would just pick out the number that was in front of your x, and that would always be your k. So it's interesting because if you think about what slope is, that's how we calculate the slope. We say what is the change in y, and we divide that by what is the change in x. So what's really interesting is that constant of proportionality and slope are related in that way. Um, and so if you think back, the way that we could tell if something was proportional is that if it was a straight line that passed through the origin. Okay, and so those are the kinds of lines that we're going to look at today. So I just want you to make a note here that this is the equation of a proportional relationship. And then I'll have you put in parentheses. It's a straight line that passes through the origin. Okay, so in this unit, we're going to look at lines that um, sometimes are proportional, sometimes aren't. For today, we'll look at just proportional lines. In the next lesson, we'll look at ones that are not. Um, so looking at these two equations again, now instead of me saying y equals kx, I'm saying y equals mx. And so from the previous lesson, we learned that m is our slope. And by the way, sometimes slope is called rate of change. That's a good time to mention that, just in case you ever hear that. Um, and so this equation, all right, kind of a similar thing, this equation is a line that passes through the origin. Okay, so really these two forms are equivalent, whether we say y equals kx or y equals mx. It means the same thing. It's just using different vocabulary to describe that rate of change, that slope, that constant of proportionality. Okay, so again, when we did this back in our ratios and proportions unit, we learned how to graph these lines using a table. Um, and so what we would do is we would fill in our x values. Remember, we would pick whatever we wanted for x as long as it fit on the graph, and then we would plot the points that we got. So instead of doing that, because that's a little bit um, tedious, we're going to learn to do this a quicker way. Okay, so that's what we call them quick graphs. Um, and the quick way to do this is to kind of use our slope to find out what the points are on the line. So because we know, looking at this first equation, y equals 2x, we know that that line is proportional because it's in the form that we've talked about, okay, 2 being our constant of proportionality. But in this case, because we're talking about slope now, we also know that our slope is 2, okay? What I'm going to have you do for each of these is you're going to start by putting a point at the origin. Because you know that this is a proportional relationship, you know that the line goes through that point. So we can put that point on our line. 
to get the next points, we're going to use our slope. Um, so if you remember in the previous lesson, slope is rise over run. So if I have a whole number like 2, I can make it into a fraction by putting 2 over 1. So what that means is I am going to rise 2 and run 1. So from the point that I just plotted here, I'm going to rise 2 and I'm going to run 1. And remember, when we run, we always go to the right. And then I'm going to do it again. I'm going to rise 2 and I'm going to run 1. And there's another point. And you can keep doing that pattern, rising 2, running 1, until you have enough points to create a line. Now, if you wanted to, you wanted to put some more points kind of on the bottom here, we could follow that same pattern. So I was going up 2 over 1, so now I can kind of go backwards. I can go down 2, back 1, just to continue the line. And I'm going to do that so it helps me make a nice straight line here. Okay, so just a couple picky things. Make sure your line is straight, so you should be using a ruler. Make sure it covers your entire graph. We don't want any short, stumpy lines. And make sure you have arrows on the end. And then lastly, we always want to label our line with the equation. Okay, so a lot quicker than filling out a table and plotting each of the points. Okay, so let's try another one. Y equals 1 fourth X. So again, I'm going to say, okay, my slope is a fourth. It's in the place where slope goes in the equation. Um, because I know that this graph is proportional, I know that I can start by putting my first point right at the origin. And then from there, I'm going to use my slope to get my next point. So I'm going to run. Let me just write this here. Rise over run. So I'm going to rise 1, and I'm going to run 4. And then I'm going to do it again. Rise 1, run 4. Okay. I'm going to try and set a couple more points in the opposite direction. So I'm just going to follow that pattern. I'm going to go back 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1. And that gets me all the points I can fit for this line. So again, make your line whoop, cover the whole graph. You should be using a ruler arrows on the end, and we label our line. Okay, awesome. Let's try another one. Y equals 2 thirds X. So now my slope is 2 thirds. Again, I know it's proportional, so I'm going to start at the origin. And my rise over run would be up 2 over 3. Rise 2 run three. You should get those four points. And then again, we can follow that pattern to get somewhere in the opposite direction. And then connect, arrows, label your line. Don't forget, if I'm going too fast for you, you can pause the video and Make sure that you're getting it. Okay, number four. Y equals negative X. So a couple things to talk about here. Um, first is, what is my slope? Well, if there is no number in front of your X, you can assume it's a 1. In this case, because it's a negative, we're going to say the slope is negative 1. Okay? Now, we want this to look at... Um, to be in rise over run form. So to make any integer value a fraction, we just put it over 1. And then we know this is proportional, so we're going to start at the origin. Okay, so this is the first time we're graphing um, a line that has a negative slope. So remember, if your rise is negative, you're not going up, you're going down. But your run is always positive, so you're always going to the right. Okay, so for this one, we're going to go down one to the right one, down one to the right one, rise negative one, run positive one. And you should pick up on that pattern pretty quickly. And then we can go in the opposite direction to fill up our graph. 
And again, you don't need this many points. Um, general rule of thumb is at least four, five points on a line. Um, I am doing this because I don't have a ruler, and so it helps me keep my line nice and straight. Okay, let's try another example here, number five. Y equals negative 3X. So my slope is negative 3. If I want to write that as um, a fraction, I'm going to put it over 1. I know that I'm starting at the origin because it's proportional. And I'm going to be rising negative 3 and running 1. So remember that means we're going down 3, but to the right 1 because we always go to the right. Down 3, run 1. And then we can go backwards to continue our pattern. It's good practice to go backwards, especially as we get into um, some different things for next year. Knowing how to continue your line in the opposite direction is important. So it doesn't hurt to practice that. Okay. So number six um, I want to talk about because we can see that our slope is negative one half, okay? What's interesting about this is how it's written. So that negative is just kind of out in the front, okay? It doesn't really um, belong to any particular number, meaning it doesn't belong to negative one, it doesn't belong to negative two, we're just saying the slope is negative. So you need to realize that when you see a negative slope, you are treating your numerator, your rise, as the negative number. Okay, even if someone were to write the slope like this, that does not change how you graph your line. That does not mean to go up one, left two. There's no such thing as going left when we're doing our slope. Okay, so even if you see something written as one over negative two, you have to know that that means you are still going to go down one, right two. So it doesn't matter where that negative is. Okay. All right, so we know this is proportional. We're starting at 0, 0, and then we are going down 1 to the right 2. Rise of negative 1, run of positive 2. Again, practice going backwards here. We need a nice straight line. Arrows on the end with a label. Okay, so that is our graphing practice. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at a line that has been graphed for us, and we're going to come up with the equation. Okay, so you already know how to find the slope of different lines, um, and really that's the only information that we need to write the equation of these lines. Okay. First thing I want to point out is um, these lines should have arrows on them. Okay, the program that I was using to make the lines did not allow me to put arrows, so I want you to know that they are there. Um, and the other thing I did on purpose was I didn't put points because I want us to practice finding the slope by choosing our own points. Okay, so the important thing to do when you're choosing your own points is to make sure that you're choosing points that are in the corners, meaning that they actually cross a nice point. Okay, so I'm going to give you some options here. Obviously, we can see it's going to the origin. This looks like it's crossing at a nice point. Here's another one. I'll do some down here. Okay, now you don't need that many. All you need is two points to find the slope. So any of those points would work. I'm just showing you that those are um, your, your possibilities. Okay, so I'm just going to pick those top two to find my slope. So remember, reading left to right, we can see this is a positive slope. It's increasing. And so to find it, I'm going to rise and run to get from that point to the next. So I'm rising three and I'm running one, which means my slope is three over one. So now that I know that information, remember, all of these lines are in the form of y equals mx. So all I need to do is y equals, I just got 3 as my slope, so y equals 3x. Okay, so once you find the slope, you plug it in for m, 
and you're good to go. All right, let's do the same thing for number two. So let me get some arrows here, and let's find some nice points. So we got the origin, and then it looks like here's a nice point. Here's one. I'll find some back here. Again, you only need two. You don't need as many as I'm drawing. I'm just giving you options. Um, so classifying it, first of all, we can see it's a negative slope. So right away, once you see it's negative, you know that you're going to be not rising in the positive direction, but you're going to be going down into the, to the right. So again, I'll just pick these first two points. So I'm going to go down and over. So if I go down one, that's negative one, and then over three. So I know my slope is negative one-third, which means my equation is y equals negative one-third x. Okay. All right, number three. Add our arrows. And let's see if we can find some nice points. It looks like here's one. And maybe here. Come back here. Okay, so those are all good options for what to use. Um, all right, so I'm going to count from one point to the next, left to right, my rise over run. So it looks like I'm rising three and I'm running four, which means my slope is three fourths. So the equation of my line is y equals three fourths x. Okay, one more like that. Let's add our arrows in. Get some good points. Okay, so again, it's a positive slope, so I'm going up and to the right, rise over run. Looks like I'm rising three and running two. So my slope is three over two. So y equals 3 over 2x. Okay, nice. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to look back at um, some examples that we would have done earlier in the year where you are given a situation um, that is proportional, but we're going to write the equation and come up with a, a real real-life graph here. Okay, so for each of these situations, we're going to write an equation that represents the situation. Then we're going to complete the table, and then we're going to graph the equation. Okay, so today at Hess, gas costs three fifty per gallon. Okay, so they tell us that our in our table here, our two variables are number of gallons versus the cost. So I want you to think about um, the dependent variable here. So the cost depends on how many gallons of gas you purchase. So cost is always our, um, I'm sorry, the dependent variable is always considered to be Y, and our independent variable is always considered to be X. So we're going to use X and Y for our variables. Okay, so if you remember, all of our equations should be in the form Y equals MX. So our equation here is Y equals our slope is the same as our constant of proportionality or our rate of change. So as soon as you spot a rate, remember a rate is something that's comparing two different units, in this case cost per gallon, that is our slope. Okay, so it's a rate, 350x. All right, so let's, let's make a table here. So if I don't buy any gallons of gas, it's costing me nothing. So there you go. That's proving that it's proportional because it's going through the origin. If I buy one gallon of gas, it's going to cost me $3.50. If I buy two gallons, it's going to cost me $7. And I can keep going here all the way up to four gallons. So ten fifty for three, $14 for four. Okay. So now to graph this, first thing I'm going to do is label my axes. So my x-axis is number of gallons, and my y-axis is cost. Okay, so let's kind of, um, let's look at our x-axis first. I got to go from 0 to 4, but I don't want to make this graph so small that it's 
finished within the first four spaces. So I'm actually going to skip every other one here. And I'll just keep going. Let's see. It looks like I can go all the way to seven, even though we're only graphing the four. Um, and for our y-axis, we have to go from zero to $14. I'm going to follow that same scale. I'm going to count by $3.50, but I'm going to skip every other line. Okay. All right, so then we're ready to graph. So zero, zero is right here. One, two. Okay, so there we go. Now, when you guys are doing a graph like this, um, it doesn't make sense to continue your line into the negatives because um, you're not buying a negative amount of gallons, nor are you paying a negative amount of money. So we don't put an arrow on the other end. Okay, we only put an arrow on one, one end. And then I'm going to label my line. Okay, so this is proportional. It goes through the origin. It is a straight line. My constant of proportionality is $3.50. Um, you might have remembered from earlier in the year that this point right here tells you your unit rate. So 350 your unit rate. Okay, so lots of lots of things to remember from earlier in the year. Okay, let's look at another one. So number two, five gala apples cost two dollars. All right, so first things first, let's talk independent versus dependent variables. So the cost depends on how many apples you buy. And so we are going to assume that means that cost is dependent and number of apples is independent. Um, now, the other thing I have to figure out is how much it costs for a single apple. Okay, so if I know five apples cost $2, if I divide $2 divided by five apples, I'm going to get that it costs 40 cents per apple. So there is your slope, your rate of change. So I'm going to say cost is equal to 40 cents per apple. Okay, so if I buy zero apples, I pay nothing. One apple, 40 cents. And we can keep going here. All the way, four apples is $1.60. All right, so if I label my axes, my x-axis is the number of apples. My y-axis is the cost. And again, I'm going to try and spread out my x-axis here a little bit. And I'll do the same for my y-axis. I'm going to count by 40 cents. And then I can go ahead and plot. Draw in our line, arrow only in one direction because we are not buying a negative amount of apples and label. Okay, one more here. Test bikes at 12 miles per hour. Okay, so we can see that our distance depends on the number of hours biked. So distance is our dependent variable, y. Number of hours is our independent variable, x. Um, 12 miles per hour is a rate. So our rate of change or our slope is 12. So we can say y equals 12x. And then we can go ahead and say biking for zero hours makes us go zero miles. One hour is 12 and so on. Okay, 
labeling our axes. We have number of hours and distance, distance in miles. Use that same scale. And we'll plot our points. Arrow on one end, we're not buying negative apples. And I'm not even talking apples anymore. <laughs> we're not biking a negative distance or a negative amount of time. Stuck on that apple question. And that's it. Okay, so now you've seen um, you know, how we can make these graphs without a table, but if we need to make a table using um, some real life situations, we can do that too. So hopefully you see the connection between slope, rate of change, and constant of proportionality. Um, in the next lesson, we're gonna talk about how to graph lines that are not proportional, um, but still have a constant rate of change. So stay tuned. <laughs>